Lalique makes some of the best men's designer fragrances. If you are not familiar with this house, you must get your nose on the fragrances of Lalique. And today I've got a top 10 list of men's designer fragrances from Lalique, and you're gonna find out what they are. Thanks so much for tuning in, it's Sebastian. I'm talking about Lalique, one of my favorite designer houses, and a lot of their fragrances can be found online at discounters for really, really great prices. For example, you can get Ancre Noir Sport for around $30. So price points are really, really inexpensive, and you can get some really great smelling quality fragrances, and it won't break the bank like a lot of the big designers like Dior, Chanel, all of these big ones are raising prices up and then you can find these fragrances for fairly decent prices online. So today I'm doing a top 10 list, mostly because there is a new fragrance from the House of Lalique called Ancre Indigo. This one is still online and not yet made it to the discounters, but hopefully you'll be able to get yourself a bottle very soon. Either somewhere like online, Lalique uh, Boutique Online sells this, or you can find it at a discounter or somewhere. But in this list, it's a top 10 list. We're gonna start off with Lalique's White from 2008, this one right here, created by Christine Nagel, who does fragrances for Hermes now. So I've ranked the list. This is a top 10 list ranked, and I've put White at the bottom. You know, it's not a bad fragrance. I like it, but when you're comparing it against the rest of the Lalique men's fragrances, this one ends up at the bottom. It's an easy wear, it's woody, it's spicy, peppery, and also, kind of bitter green astringent. It features a prominent note of pentagram, and there's loads of black pepper, there's tamarind, and it's the combination of the tamarind, which is sour, and the pentagram, which is bitter sour, it creates an astringency here. But there's also elemi, cardamom, nutmeg, violet, cedar, musk, oak moss, and amber. It's an easy wear. You gotta like the kind of woody, bitter, spicy, green kind of uh, astringent fragrances to be appreciative of this one. But again, it's a very easy to wear and it does kind of smell like white, by the way. So it's Lalique's White starting off the list at number 10. So we've got two Lalique Pour Hommes, first of which is Pour Homme Equus, this one right here with the horse on it. We've got a lion and a horse. Equus came out in 2001, created by Emily Bevier Copperman. So this has notes of juniper, Sequoia, vetiver, cardamom, nutmeg, violet leaves, bergamot, redwood note, lemon, and mace. So this one's to me a very aromatic, spicy, woody fragrance. So it has all these spices and woods and aromatic notes, plus you're thrown in the violet leaves in here, which is creating an ozonic touch. So it's very watery, it's very fresh. Violet leaves is a kind of note you would wear when it's warm outside. If you like the idea of a, a fragrance that kind of wears like water, even though you're spraying on liquid, but the effect is water because violet leaves are ozonic and they create a watery touch. So this is the kind of fragrance you would wear. Look up my channel for violet leaves fragrances. But along the way, you also have more woods and fresh citrus notes and uh, so on. You've got this really nice, uh, very classy, gentlemanly, ozonic, spicy, woody fragrance. So Dalik, Equus, this is Port Homme Equus from 2001, is at number nine. And then Lalique Port Homme from 1997, the one with the lion on it, is at number eight. And this one to me is more of a barbershop -y fougere fragrance, launched in 97, created by Maurice Roussel. Yeah, he does some great work for sure. I just didn't care for his uncut gem for Frederick Mall. This is featuring notes of lavender, iris, cedarwood, sandalwood, oak moss, vanilla, rosemary, patchouli, amber, and grapefruit. Sure, it does have all your typical notes that go into create a fougere barbershop fragrance, but this one also has loads of iris, so it does create the powdery effect, some warmth in there with the vanilla, the amber in the base, the really amazing patchouli in there as well, the earthy touch. And then you've got citruses and woods in, in, in addition. And then that oak moss that comes in gives you a little bit of a more of a classic edge because the usage of oak moss has gone, gone way down because of the IFRA regulations. It might come off a bit old school, but let's say this is a barbershop fougere from the 90s, the late 90s, whereas a barbershop fougere like Dracar Noir from the early 80s. So there's definitely a difference there. So this one's more modern if you compare it to a fragrance like that, but still it's a bit old school since it is from the 90s. But either way, Lalique Pour Homme with the lion on it is at number
number eight. So Lalique is known for Ange Noir, and there's three of them here in this video. There is a feminine version as well. Ange Noir Pour Louis, I think is what it's called. Porel, I'm sorry, Porel. Uh, that one I don't have in the video, obviously, because it's uh, targeted to the ladies, but there's three Ange Noirs, and now we have the Ange Indigo as well. So there's four Ange something fragrances from Lalique, and they're known for the La Ange Noir fragrances, as I said. That's kind of how I discovered the brand, and I've been impressed with their quality of the fragrances. Not only are they quality, they smell great. They don't really smell too much like a lot of other designer fragrances, which a lot of brands do smell like one another because they're trying to copy each other. And then also, the price point for these fragrances, once they end up at the discounters, you're going to get some good deals on these fragrances. So Ange Noir Sport is at the bottom of the list compared to the other, although what I should tell you is the original Ange Noir I left off the list because Ange Noir a la Extreme and Ange Noir are sort of similar. So I'm going to talk to you about the original Ange Noir in the bonus section. Ange Noir Sport for me is not only great, there's a reminder of uh, the discontinued Anique Goutal vetiver fragrance from, I don't know, when was it, the 80s or the 90s when that came out. So this came out in 2013. It's Natalie Lorsan creation. It's vetiver, cypress, grapefruit, watery notes, bergamot, cashmere wood, lavender, nutmeg, and musk. And for me, it wears very fresh, even though you've got that kind of earthy, grassy, woody characteristic of the vetiver, which Ange Noir series is known for. This wears very fresh because not only do you have that kind of zingy, spicy citrus of the grapefruit, you've got watery notes here as well to give you this kind of watery, drippy, citrusy, zingy, spicy edge to the fragrance with all that vetiver in there. Along the way, you have some musk, lavender, some other spices and musky notes to create this really great fresh vetiver fragrance. So, Ange Noir Sport from Lalique from 2013 is at number seven. And as I said, if you are a fan or were a fan of Anique Goutal's Vetiver fragrance, the original, not the cologne one that came out many years later, do check that out if you still remember what the Anique Goutal smells like. So next, at number six, it's Linsumi from 2016. This is also a very unique take on a barbershop fougere fragrance. Remember I said this one with the lion on it is a barbershop fougere. So this came out in 97 and this is a 2016, so almost 20 years later. So this particular Barbershop Fougere fragrance is a very modern Barbershop Fougere fragrance. It's also ice cold. You definitely wear the cold characteristic of the fragrance. So it's got a cooling effect. Came out in 2016, it's a Fabrice Pellegrin creation. Uh, he works for Fermaniche, where Nathalie Lorsan works as well. So it's interesting that the, the, the perfumers are in the same house. But it features notes of clary sage, woodsy notes, sage, rum, lavender, vetiver, black pepper, bergamot, oak moss, and patchouli. Yes, there is a booziness here. But I wouldn't call this, this like an uber boozy fragrance. There just is a booziness here, working with the aromatics, the woods, and the spices. And it's a really solid release. The only negative about this one, because it's got that ice cold feeling for me, it does wear a bit light. So warmer days would be appropriate for this more than colder days. But then again, some people don't care about the intensity of fragrances. It's more like a signature scent. They just want to smell great over and over again. So they'll wear the same kind of fragrance. I think you can do that. Again, all these fragrances, except for one of them that I'm going to talk to you about, the new one, uh, Anke Indigo, can be found at really, really great prices at the discounters. So this is Lalique's Linsumi at number six. Next, going to the fragrance Homage a la Homme from 2012, this one right here. And this is a Christine Nagel creation. Once again, she did uh, Lalique uh, White. Homage a la Homme is created by Christine Nagel along with Mathilde Bijal, so it's a co-creation with two female perfumers. This is a violet, violet leaves, oud, saffron, black pepper, labdanum, tonka beans, musk, bergamot fragrance. You know, it's powdery because we've got the violets, and we also have violet leaves, so it has an ozonic quality about it. So just imagine this kind of powder effect and also the watery effect working together. The oud in here is very wearable. It's a designer fragrance in the end. It's not any funky or anything like that. Sure, it has, has some leathery touches, lots of spices, amber, and things like that, and musk comes in as well. It's an easy wear, very classy. It's a violet bomb. It's kind of like a modern take on 
maybe something like Jeffrey Bean's uh, gray flannel, but not necessarily smelling super green like that because that fragrance also has galbanum and things like that. So if you like violets, violet leaves and fragrances, definitely try Hommage à la Homme from Lalique and that's at number five. So up next, we've got White in Black, this one right here. So White in Black came out in 2021, whereas White, I believe the original came out in 2008, from what I remember uh, telling you. So many years later, this White in Black came out, which to me does seem a little bit like Layton from Parfums of Marley. So I don't see this currently at the discounters, but originally I bought it at a discounted price and I was happy about that. And so it's currently selling off of the Lalique website at suggested retail. But White and Black, created by Karine de Brule Sereni. It's featuring notes of vanilla, cardamom, lavender, pink pepper, patchouli, bergamot, elami, olibanum, ambroxan, tolu balsam, and grapefruit. So if you're into the idea of Leighton and those kind of vanilla, spicy, aromatic, woody, earthy fragrances, you're gonna enjoy this one quite a bit. It's a dry fragrance, not syrupy. It's sweet for sure and spicy and the herbal aromatic touches comes in as well. Lavender is pretty prominent here. And then along the way, you'll have the musk and the balsamic notes and the citruses and things like that. I think it's nice. It does smell like Leighton. If you're looking for an alternative, a cheaper alternative, you can find it at the discounters for even better. Because I, I bought mine for around $60 if I if I'm remembering correct. But it is around $130 for 100 ml suggested retail. So it's Lalique White and Black at number four. Next, at number three, it is uh, Lalique's Anka Indigo. This is the latest fragrance for men from Lalique. Really solid offering, I really like it. It's a fragrance launched in 2023, created by Anique Minardo, featuring notes of vetiver, black tea, juniper berries, pink pepper, saffron accord, patchouli, bergamot, ambergris accord. So basically they started a new series called Ancre Indigo. I'm assuming that's what's happening here. So they've dropped the Ancre Noir, which is vetiver and cypress mostly. Here we've got vetiver with black tea. Black tea, vetiver has smokiness, black tea has smokiness. So there's definitely a smoky edge about this fragrance and you're getting smokiness from the vetiver and the black tea. But black tea for me, or tea in general and fragrances are super smooth and cozy. There's a soft spiciness about the fragrance here, even though it's got that kind of uh, earthy, uh, you know, rooty kind of vetiver that's in here. But along the way there's spices, there's aromatics, a little leather comes in for sure from the saffron, earthy touches and uh, a bit ambergris I guess. I, I wouldn't call this like really extreme in here. I think it just kind of creates a little bit of a ambery you know experience in, in the dry down rather than uh, anything marine uh, smelling because ambergris comes from the the whales from the sea. But I think it's a really solid release from uh, Lalique. It's probably a little more softer than other fragrances, but I quite enjoy it. It gives me a very calming effect. Tea is very calming for me. And I think Anique Minardo did a great job. Remember also Anique Minardo had a, done a fragrance for Bulgari called Bulgarian Black, the round bottle. This is not her first tea fragrance, I should say. Um, doesn't smell anything like that Bulgari Black. Bulgari Black had that kind of rubbery, leathery quality. This is more vetiver. There is smokiness here for sure and uh, pretty much stops there. But a really solid offering, Ancre Indigo from Lalique. Hopefully they'll end up at the discounters uh, very soon and you guys can take advantage of it because I had to buy that from the Lalique website and they were out of stock so they had to order it from France. Uh, it took a while to get to me. Uh, and so no, dis no like department stores sell it. At least I haven't been able to find it. The next one at number two, it's Ancre Noir à la Extreme, my favorite of the Ancre Noir series of fragrances. And to me, it's a very luxurious take on the original Ancre Noir, which is here. I'm going to talk to you about it in uh, the bonus section here after the outro. To me, they're both about the same price. You can find them for about 100 ml, $35. It's very inexpensive, but you got to be into uh, vetiver fragrances. You've got to enjoy vetiver. If you don't like vetiver, I've heard some really negative things about this fragrance because people go from wearing something very sweet and mass appealing to a vetiver that they're not really used to. So it's not like a crowd pleaser kind of a fragrance. It's 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 rooty, earthy, you know, vetiver, which is very woody. So we've got to be into those kind of uh, notes, 
once you are aware of that and you know what you're getting into, you're going to probably enjoy this. And this particular version is the luxurious version. To me, the fragrance does remind me of Sycamore from uh, Chanel. So if you love that fragrance and you're looking for a cheap alternative, why not go for this first until you can afford the real thing? But this came out in 2015. Once again, Nathalie Lorsan is the person that created it. She created all the Encre Noir fragrances. Features notes of vetiver, incense, cypress, elemi, benzoin, sandalwood, patchouli, orris, and bergamot. It's a really, really great fragrance for a really, really low price. So if you're looking for inexpensive fragrances, most of these fragrances are going to be around $30, $40, $50 at the discounter. So you can get two, three, four fragrances now at the price of a suggested retail price of a fragrance at Macy's for the latest designer fragrances. So either way, number two, it's Ange Noir à la Extreme. And at number one, can you guess, can you guess, it's Ombre Noir. So this is also Karine de Brule Sereni. Sereni, she created uh, La Lique White and Black. But honestly, I have to tell you something. She also created a fragrance for a jewelry house from France called Mabusson. The fragrance is Un Histoire d'Homme Irresistible. These two fragrances do have similarities if you haven't uh, noticed it. So I had found during the pandemic bottles of Un Histoire d'Homme Irresistible for around 30 bucks, I can't remember exact price, but a really, really great price. I did a video, then all of a sudden, online sold out. This is a green woody fragrance with fig leaves. Here, it actually came out a couple years after Ombre Noir came out. Here, it's very similar. Imagine this, lightened up, and then boozy tobacco added to it to give you the same kind of smell. So to me, the same perfumer created both of these. But Lalique's version is a little more interesting because you have that light toned down a little bit, boosted up with booze and uh, tobacco. That's what it is. So this was a Middle East exclusive for a while, Ombre Noir. It came out in 2017, created by Karine de Brule Sereni. It's tobacco, cognac, cinnamon, myrrh, papyrus, olibanum, cedar, mint, tonka, figs, and bergamot. It's a really delicious fragrance. And now I see it at the discounters for around 50 bucks because it comes and goes. And if you are in the market for a boozy tobacco fragrance with this kind of green fig leaf running throughout its fig leaves. It's not the fruits. At least I don't get the fruits of the fig with both of these. And and with the Un Histoire de Homme Irresistible, it's even cheaper. It's around 30 bucks right now online, but this is even greener and more of a fig leaf characteristic in there, like the prominence of the fig leaves. Here, it's here, it's in there, but we're talking about more tobacco and cognac and cinnamon and myrrh more than the fig leaves. But both of them are really, really great. And that's why I'm putting Ombre Noir here at number one. I think it deserves a number one spot as I really, really love the way it smells. Anyway, Ancre Indigo ended up at number three. It's a really solid offering from this house. Let me know if you've gotten your nose on it and let me know what you think about the other fragrances that I've uh, featured here today. I've got a couple in the bonus section. Stay tuned for that. But do put a comment down. Let me know what your favorite Lalique fragrance are and how would you rank this list as well put a comment down below so I can find out either way as I said I have links to all of the fragrances or most of the fragrances at discounted prices you can take advantage of them if you're in the market for some new fragrances either way guys thanks so much for watching today if you have any questions or comments please list below please like this video please share it follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye Okay, as I mentioned, I'm going to talk about Ancre Noir here. It's the original that came out in 2006, created by Nathalie Lorsan, and then they did various flankers after that. They brought on the uh, Ancre Noir Sport and then Ancre Noir à la Extreme, and I don't know when the Pour L launched, the feminine version of Ancre Noir, which to me kind of smells like Lyric Man, of all things, from Amouage. But the original that started it, to me, is a bit minimalistic and sim simplistic and linear for me. So I don't recommend it too much. I much prefer the a la extreme because the extreme is taking it to the luxurious level. But if you're looking for more of a simplistic, smoky vetiver fragrance with musk, cypress, and cashmere wood, this would be it for you. But the reason I left it off is because, to me, Ancre Noir and Ancre Noir a la extreme smell kind of similar except the a la extreme is a lot more luxurious. But either way, that's Ange Noir. Last but not least, this one didn't make the list because I believe it's discontinued. I can't find it anywhere. This is Homage à la Homme Voyager, which came out in 2015, 2014. Uh, I do have another Lalique top 10 list on the channel, which this is featured on, 
but I can't find this fragrance anywhere. If you can get it and you like the idea of it, look for it. Launched in 2014, created by Michelle Almarac and Mylene Alran. It's a patchouli bomb with vetiver, papyrus, oak moss, cardamom, bergamot, amber, and vanilla. And to me, I feel like there's a little bit of rose in this as well, and it smells super fantastic. I've got a little bit left in this, and I'm going to cherish this bottle for a while because... Michel Almerec does some great work. I really like his fragrances. He does some good work and he did a great job here, especially featuring my favorite note of patchouli. So either way, if you can get your hands or your nose on a bottle of Hommage à la Homme Voyager by Lalique, do. I think it's worth it, but don't pay too much for it because, you know, it is discontinued. So most likely prices will be jacked up quite a bit. But either way, thanks so much for watching today's video. Stay tuned for more soon. Bye-bye.